ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधश्य ज्ञान अंजन स्वलाकाय चक्षुर उन्मिलित जैन तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम यू ऑल कैन चैंट इफ यू लाइक मुखम करोति वाचालाम पंगुम लघयते गिरीम यत कृपा तदहम वंदे श्री गुरु दिन तारणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम नम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रस्थाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधर शिव सदे गौर भक्त विंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 नाम संकीर्तन की जय हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की जय संबल भक्त विंद की जय नीता गौर प्रेम नंदी हरे हरे वो हरे कृष्णा so we will get into the discussion i know that uh, we have started with little bigger batch but slowly and slowly i see devotees have conflict and so many things going on so we will see how everything goes well let's stay focused and uh, continue working on it so we are in fifth chapter karma yoga action in krishna consciousness <clears throat> that is how chila prabhupad titles this chapter but this chapter is mostly talking about gyan yoga so part of the third chapter fourth chapter and fifth chapter talks about gyan yoga but they talk uh, different steps so this chapter is basically talking how niskam karma yoga can culminate in gyan yoga and then <clears throat> what should be the focus gyan yogi which is liberation but uh, <clears throat> gyan yogi as a practitioner they meditate upon the supreme lord's brahman's feature so that's what we are uh, doing in the very beginning of the chapter arjun asked the same question just to recap my dear lord should i uh, follow the process of sanyas which means so sanyas here means uh, karma sanyas renounce all the activity or should i follow the process of niskam karma yoga so karma yoga here we we'll read niskam karma yoga krishna said that uh, both sanyas or karma yoga niskam karma yoga which means acting without the desire for results without the desire of any fruits will lead to the same result so if you perform niskam karma yoga you will have multiple benefit or you will have the benefit over being a being a sanyasi because you will have something as a niskam karma that will continue purifying it and once you are engaged as niskam karma yogi then due course of time that will lead that will advance your consciousness and then you will become a gyan yogi and when you become gyan yogi for liberation you have to focus on supreme personality of god so your focus should be on the supreme lord and that should be on his brahman feature so should be pretty good right should be pretty easy to understand so last week we went up to verse number 22nd right in the previous series of verses krishna is talking about that what are the symptoms of a self realized 
person. And we saw uh, Shukham, Akshayam, Ashnute. All of these, you know, Istir Budhir, Asamudhau, Na Praharshet, Priyam, Prapya, Na Udvijet, Prapya, Chapriyam. All of that we say, we saw that. And then Krishna continues and he is now giving the guidance that how a self-realized person acts when he sees the object of sense pleasure, how does he respond to it? This is a very beautiful verse. So I put it on the full screen and I'm sure you all would like the meaning of it. Nahi sampars jabhoga, yehi sampars jabhoga, dukha yonaya evate, ade antvantah kontaya, nate shuramate buddha. Beautiful words. Yehi sampars jabhoga, dukhaya yonaya evate, ade antvantah kontaya, nate shuramate buddha. You know, whenever senses are coming, in touch with the object of sensual pleasure, right away, duk yonaya evata, right away, it creates the impetus for dukha. So, whenever senses are coming in contact with sensual pleasure for sense gratification. Right there, it creates the impetus for dukkha or suffering. Adya antavanta kantya. It has beginning and then it ends. Na teshu ramte buddha. A person who has this knowledge, that person, here the buddha, buddha, Buddhi, wise man, wise man, do not engage in such type of activity which has beginning and end. And he knows that this is cause of his suffering. So knowing that it has beginning, it's going to end. Knowing that this is going to be cause of his suffering, a learned man, a man of knowledge would not engage in such activity. This is higher stage, right? Very high stage. So that's how verse number 22nd finish. And then he says that uh, try to tolerate the agitation. Agitation. So, shaknoti you. Shaknoti means if one can tolerate, if one has a strength, shakno, if one has a strength to tolerate, Calm the urges of senses, which is arising from krodha, which is arising from the urges of senses are arising from kama and krodha. So, one who is able to tolerate saknoti, one who is able to tolerate the urge of calm and Krodha, prak sarira vimukshana, till the time of giving up his present body. Sah jukta sasukhi nara, he is well situated and is happy in this world. So, the material desire is outcome of raga and dvesha, kham and krodha. Too much attachment, I lacked. Too much you know, detachment, I do not like it. 
I hate it. So uh, a Buddha, a learned man, knows that the urge of senses are coming from desire and anger. And if he can tolerate that, then shah juktaha sa sukhi naraha. Juktaha here refers to the man who is, or the person who is fully situated in Brahman. So he's well situated. Where he's well situated? In Brahman. And he's very happy. It furthers, it furthers explain what exactly it means. Yo antaha shukho antar arams arams tathantar jyoti revayaha sha yogi brahm nirvanam brahm bhuto adigachati yo antaha shukho so why he is not why he is not uh, trying to enjoy with the urges of sense and with the urges of sense which are coming from desire and anger why he is not so much factuated to enjoy the urges which are coming because of desire and senses because you want to he is receiving happiness and sukho by being self-realized by by looking into his self by looking into his super self antar aramash he is he is releasing receiving the pleasure inside tathantar jyotir eva eha he is his sight is involved so that's what basically they say that what is the difference between self-realized person and not a self-realized person? A self-realized person is always looking inside. He is trying to find pleasure inside. But a non-self-realized person, he is trying to find pleasure outside. And this is also a very uh, good, I would say, milestone for advancement. A person who are, who are advancing in Krishna consciousness also, his happiness is more inward than looking outward. You can meditate on this verse a lot and bring a multiple example to make this point uh, more clear. So, a person who is in a Brahm Bhuta stage, Brahm Bhuto Adigachati, since he is meditating inside on Brahman, he is, he is receiving the joyous happiness meditating inside. That person, when he leaves this body, he goes back to Brahma, Brahman emerges to the Brahman. He is basically qualified to attain liberation because he has always looked upon the happiness inside. Lavante, then it further continues. Lavante Brahm Nirvanam Rasya Chhina Kalmashaha Chhina Dvaidha Yatamanaha Sharva Bhuta Hiterataha Lavante Brahma Nirvanam Rasya Chhina Kalmasaha Chhina Dvedha Yatamanha Sarvabhuta Hiterataha. So, since he is Chhina Kalmasaha, he says, he is free from all sins. And Chhina Dvedha, Dvedha Divality, he is free from the Duality and doubts. Yatat manaha. He is, he is fully focused. His mind is fully focused within. Sarvabhuta hiterataha. And he is 
working for sarva bhutahite is working for welfare of all living being so these are some of the quality of the person who have attained the perfection of gyan yoga and some of these concepts could be applicable for bhakti yogi also right because bhakti yogi they are more advanced right they are advanced than parmatma yogi which is stang yoga and then gyan yoga so for sure a bhakti yogi has all of these qualities he is freedom from free from all the sins and he is free from all the dualities and his mind is always engaged within and he is always working for uh, welfare of all living being we saw why he is free from all the sin because he has no desire he has no taste right now we saw in this verse here says that na te suram te buddha he doesn't engage knowing that uh, the urges of sense are coming from kham and krodha so he has renounced all of that external differences and duality that is around him and that's why that's why he is acting for the welfare of all living being vidya abhinay sampane brahmine gavahastani suni chaiva swapake cha pandita samadarshina so this samdarshita comes when when we are acting on the platform of soul right and we gave the example that uh, if somebody is going to present a raw coffee or a packaged coffee good quality or a premium high quality coffee which one you would choose then manohar prabhu said prabhu is kind of a trick we would not choose any one of them because we don't drink coffee yes that's the right answer because you don't have taste right so advanced person hmm, is seeing that this uh, body that we have uh, been given gun karma swabhava cha you know based upon the living's being guna ignorance passion and uh, goodness then his karma what type of action he was indulged into and what type of swabhav he wants to uh, live into krishna gives that soul form of body that he carries on so a brahm bhuta a realized person knows that kam krodha vimukta nam yatinam yata chet sham abhito brahm nirvanam vartate vidit atmanam vidit atmanam so in that stage we saw some of the qualities and qualification of a person who are in the higher stage of brahman realization that person can attain liberation very soon because he is free from anger and material desire he controls his mind chukt chet sham and he is sincerely endeavoring for perfection with self discipline and being self realized so liberation here is talking about brahman stage asparsan kritwa bahir bhayam chakshush chavantare bruho pran apnau now something is being introduced here pran apnau shamau kritwa na savyantra charinau etendriya mano buddhir munir moksha prayanah 
विगत इच्छा भय क्रोधो यदा मुक्त सो फ्रॉम हियर नाउ कृष्णा स्टार्ट इंट्रोड्यूसिंग दर थॉर प्राण आप नौ समौ कृतवा Now he has started introducing a another stage, which is higher than merging into Brahman. So, in 26 verse, he says that he attains liberation. Soon he will attain liberation if he has all of these qualities that we have gone through. But there is another stage here, which is Astang Yoga. So, setting out all external sense object and Focusing his eyes between the eyebrows. Now we are talking about Ashtanga Yoga, right? Suspending the inwards and outward breath, and thus Yata Indriya, Mano Buddhir, controlling his senses, mind, and buddhi. That transcendentalist aims at liberation. So this liberation here. is talking about pramatma he becomes free from the desire bigat ichha see here is here bigat ichha bhaya krodho he becomes he becomes free from ichha bhaya fear krodha anger yah sada mukta eva sah that person sada certainly Muktaha will be liberated. So, Krishna here briefly introduce the next chapter, chapter six, that a person who is having all of these controls will be certainly uh, will be qualified to be to be. Higher stage of liberation, and that's how we'll get into uh, next chapter. This is the final verse from this chapter. Very powerful verse. It sounds very easy, but this verse has tons of meaning uh, that it carries on. And this is the verse you have to memorize also. Twenty nine has a starts. चैप्टर सो karmayogi is engaged in this yagya but who is the benefactor who is the real beneficiary of their yagya and tapasya the supreme personality of god head krishna says that right that these demigods are receiving the honor on my behalf सर्वलोके महेश्वरम एंड देन द सेम सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड हु इज ऑल प्रवेडिंग इन ऑल लिविंग बीइंग व्हिच आर ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ अस्तांग योगी सो सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड एज परमात्मा सरलोके महेश्वरम इज ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ वर्शिप फॉर अस्तांग योगी सो अस्तांग योगी इज ऑल्सो वर्शिपिंग द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड यज्ञ व्हिच इज बीइंग डन बाय व्हिच इज बीइंग डन बाय कर्म योगी दे ऑल्सो आर मेडिटेटिंग ऑन कृष्णा एंड ज्ञानी हु आर डूइंग तपस्या they are also doing the tapasya but the real benefactor for that is also krishna this is very beautiful verse krishna later says that 
and we'll hear that. So he says that the karma yogi or gyan yogi, I am their object of worship. And for ashtang yogi, I am their object of worship. Suhirdam sharva puta nam. And I'm also object of worship for bhakta. I am the supreme well wisher or of, of all living entity because I instruct them the knowledge of devotion. So for bhaktas, devotees, the object of worship is supreme personality of Godhead. For astang yogi, the object of worship is supreme personality of Godhead. For jnani and karma yogi, their object of worship is supreme personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. Gyatva maam tantim rikshati. The one who knows this attains the real peace. So in reality, this verse is saying that we are trying to know Krishna. Example is given that uh, there is, uh, and that's the yoga ladder, right? Ladder. The ladder is moving towards Krishna. Some may be living a Vishaya Asakti life, very much life that is driven based on sensual enjoyment. And then from there, he will, he or she will start engaging as Sakam Karmyogi, where there are some rules and regulations for the pleasure of demigod for the higher result. Krishna says that, that all of these demigods are my authorized, authorized entity, and they are working on my behalf. And then higher than that is Niskam Sakam and then Niskam Karm Yoga. Niskam Karm Yoga, Krishna says that if you stay engaged for sufficient time, it will lead to the Gyan Yoga. And Gyan Yogi will have their object of worship on Brahman. And then Krishna introduced Astang Yoga. And Astang Yogi, their object of worship is going to be Paramatma. And then for devotee, their object of worship is Supreme Personality of Godhead. So knowing this, that doesn't matter where we fall on that step, in reality, or as a result, we are directly or indirectly worshiping Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Gyatva Maam Santi Mrikshati, the one who knows is really knower, knower of the knowledge, and the one who knows will attain the peace, peace from the pangs of material suffering. So now Krishna will talk about Astang Yoga, which is going to be sixth chapter. But before we proceed to sixth chapter, is there is it clear? The concept is clear. Let me go back to this slide here. So what will happen now, before we get into the sixth slide, now this graph will come, okay? So let me a little bit summarize here and then we'll open for the questions and answer. So a Sakam Karmi Yogi <clears throat> by elevating their consciousness will engage in Niskam Karmi Yoga. Niskam Karmi Yoga where he is acting for the pleasure of higher cause. His action is not for his self pleasure, but for the pleasure of super self. And then <clears throat> he comes to the stage of jnana. By performing his Kam Karma Yoga, he comes to the stage of jnana. When he comes to the stage of jnana, we have talked that he has two paths. Now we are going to add a third path. So that's what it is. This is the complete story. Now, on the stage of jnana, he can choose one path out of these three paths. 
the first path he can choose is that since he has achieved the stage of jnani he can still continue as niskam karm yogi and continue cultivating the jnana limbs of jnana and that was the subject for chapter 5 krishna said that if you go with that option chances of success are very high so why because if prematurely you think that you are qualified to perform jnana yoga you go along the process after some time you find that you are not you still have some deficiencies then this ashtang yoga will continue purifying it until you become a perfected jnani yogi the another process is that that you can just uh engage into uh performing the karma sanyas where you take this you take this niskam karma yoga completely out and you fully engage in cultivating the jnana yoga which is meditating on the essence of vedic teaching and that if you just perform jnana yoga then both of these two will lead you to liberation in the form of brahman realization of the supreme personality of godhead but then krishna the third point that he is going to add in sixth chapter that on the gyan yoga platform if you practice ashtang yoga and then we'll hear about it that will lead you to liberation also but that liberation will be realization of parmatma parmameti parmameti bhagwan iti sabdate so we are not talking about bhakti tek the pure devotional service but we are talking about parmatma realization little bit of the tangent to give you some understanding uh vishnachavati thakur says very clearly that gyan yogi gyan yogi realizing the brahman feature of the supreme lord is because of the bhakti because lord himself is gyan murti you know he is personification of all the knowledge so even attaining the brahman cannot happen without some degree of bhakti so gyan yogi attaining the brahman realization the brahman realization that he attains he attains because of the part of bhakti that he has but that bhakti is founded on jnana this is called guna bhuta bhakti this is a term introduced by vishwanath bhakti thakur guna bhuta bhakti same thing as sang yogi realizing the parmatma is uh, also not because of the sang yoga but because of the bhakti some part of the bhakti that they perform as a secondary limb not the primary limb the primary limb and we'll hear some of this in act of devotion there is primary limb of the bhakti and then there is secondary limb of the bhakti so when someone is guna bhuta bhakti then they perform gyan yoga or astang yoga as primary limb and bhakti as a secondary limb so attainment of the brahman or parmatma happens because of the bhakti that they do and bhakta attains bhagwan because bhakta perform bhakti as a primary limb and then rupa goswami says anya vilasita sunyam gyan karma anavritam anukulenu krishnanu silnam bhaktir utama so this utamam bhakti is now at that stage 
this gyan and karma the limbs of gyan and karma has been anavritam and vishnath chakravarti thakur says that's kevalya bhakti so gunabhuta bhakti is bhakti based on based on gyan yoga or astang yoga based on guna and these or so sakam karm yoga is in the mode of passion i'm not sure if you all are understanding this thing or making note or this things will help you a lot astang yoga is mode of passion gyan yoga sorry sakam karm yoga is on the mode of passion gyan yoga and astang yoga is in the mode of goodness bhakti is beyond shuddha bhakti is beyond so one cannot achieve supreme personality of godhead is staying within the guna tragunya bhava tragunya bisaya veda nastar gunya bhava arjuna come out of this gunas and then you will attain bhagwan so so in uh, gyan yoga and in astang yoga there is bhakti but that bhakti is in a very weak stage it's not kevalya bhakti it's not purified bhakti so devotee let me give a pause here before i keep on talking so much so is it clear so far can somebody confirm is it clear the concept yes, is clear so a bhakti a devotee can also so now this is for the other personality for gyan yogi and astang yogi and sakam karm yogi whatever result they achieve they achieve based on some part of devotion that they have done merely gyan yoga perfected gyan yogi would never leave never lead to even brahman understanding of the supreme personality of godhead it has to be bhakti and what is the limbs of the gyan yoga they do meditate on the essence of the shastra shastra says that uh, param purush is bhagwan okay so they will meditate on that but they would not know that the the param purusha has a form okay but they do some bhakti so the point that i'm trying to make here is that either attaining the brahman or pramatma none of these attainment can happen without having some bhakti but that bhakti is not kevalya bhakti that bhakti is still founded on gyana founded on astanga but when devotee performs pure bhakti shuddha bhakti uttama bhakti kevalya bhakti where they are engaged in following the limbs of devotional service nectar of devotion 64 limbs five of them are prominent then he attains the bhagwan form because the process has to be the action has to be pure to achieve the pure goal so ahituki apartihata so so it has to be ahituki and apartihata ahituki is basically purity of the goal the goal has to be pure and then apartihata gyan karma anavritam action has to be pure so the so when one's action and one's goal both of them are pure then that's called uttama bhakti so we are not talking about uttama bhakti here but also know that we are not completely ignoring the bhakti when we are talking about gyan yoga or astang yoga please be aware that we are still talking some part of bhakti and that's why when we read step of path purport both karma yoga or gyan yoga or astang yoga all of them would sound like that we are only talking about bhakti yoga yes 
because the result that you get, you get due to bhakti that you perform by doing that yoga. So logically, if you think in a very coherent, consistent way, it will make more sense to do bhakti. Why not to do bhakti then? It's very, log very logical, one will conclude. Why not to do bhakti then? If bhakti is basically leading me to some form of attainment of the Lord's feature, then why not to do in completely and pure form? And keep your goal pure, keep your action pure, and attain that purest goal, which is Bhagwan. So with that, uh, I would like to give a pause. So I want to just introduce a third, you know, a stage or third step here on the platform of Kyan. Now a person is going to follow the limb of Ashtanga Yoga, and that would be sixth chapter. So far, we have talked about fifth chapter, okay, which is starting with Niskam Karmi Yoga two, because that person has made sufficient purification in third and fourth chapter. Now is fully purified to follow the Gyan Yoga. Krishna advises that better you continue following Niskam Karmi Yoga, which is on the higher stage of Niskam Karmi Yoga, and cultivation of Gyan. That was the topic of fifth chapter. And sixth chapter will talk. This second option, Krishna completely says that don't do it because if you are not qualified and prematurely you take artificially uh, renunciation, mithyachari. It's better to do your duty right than doing others' duty wrong. Multiple examples we saw. We saw in the third chapter, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, that a girhasta might be engaged in their household activity as niskam karmi yogi, and somebody prematurely will take the sannyas yoga and start showing that, oh, I have renounced everything. Then that sannyasi, since his goal is not right, he, his action is not right, he may go down. He may go to the lower planetary system. But a girhasta, since he is acting in his purified form, he may attain the higher stage. So better you purify your intent, you purify your action, and do what is your adhikar. That adhikar will lead you to the higher stage rather than artificially pretending. So the second step most likely is not being spoken a lot rather than just we heard that this you should not do because this one does not have guarantee. Yes, if you have, if you are 100% sure that you have purified completely, which is hard to know <laughs> if you are purified or not, Krishna is saying that, why don't you do this one? Take some Niskam Karim Yoga and continue practicing the Gyan Yoga. And then next chapter, we'll talk about Astan Yoga. So with that, I would like to give a pause and let's have some uh, conversation among ourselves. Let's see what are the things you have to talk. And uh, may I ask, is it clear? I know it's a little bit uh, difficult to say that I understood everything, but was it clear up to some extent or no? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Prabhu. I mean, a lot more clear. It's like a, a very deeper understanding of Bhagavad Gita than before. Thank you, Prabhuji. It's all constant practice and reading. So you all should read constantly, meditate, keep your course of reading in the beginning very focused. I want to study Bhagavad Gita very systematically, Bhagavatam very systematically, Chaitanya Charitamrita very systematically. These three literatures are sufficient. Okay. No need to unnecessarily try to be too smart and start 
talking about so many things because all you are doing is that you are, unless and until you are not expert, which in many cases I am not, it's better to follow the instruction that's coming from his divine grace, Prabhupada, which is aligned with the instruction that our acharyas have given. So, uh, one more thing I would like to share. It's very important to let you know that. So, uh, Bhagavad Gita talks about Guna Bhuta Bhakti, Pradhan Bhuta Bhakti, and Kevalya Bhakti. So, Guna Bhuta Bhakti is basically Karma Yoga, Gyan Yoga, Ashtan Yoga. Pradhan Bhakti is basically where Bhakti is prominent, but still there is some component of Gyana or Ashtanga. And finally, it talks about you know, pure, unalloyed uh, devotional service, where Krishna says that, uh, you know, live everything and don't fear. I'll take care of you. That's Uttam Bhakti. So Bhagavad Gita talks about all these three types of Bhakti, which is uh, the terms are given to us by Vishnachakarti Thakur. Guna Bhuta Bhakti, Pradhani Bhuta Bhakti, and Kevalya Bhakti. It's, it emphasizes on Padhan Bhuta Bhakti and Kevalya Bhakti. And it extract, the abstract, the summary that it gives is Kevalya Bhakti. Okay, so in Bhagavad Gita, you will hear about Guna Bhuta Bhakti, where some devotion is there with a lot of Gyan and Karma. Let me see if I can bring that slide. It will be nice. Just one minute devotees. If I can bring that out, that will be very helpful for you to understand those terms. Just one minute, please. I need to find, I was I was on the another meeting and right after that, I came on this one, so I didn't pull that slide out. So Pradhan Bhuta is Ashtang Yoga, right? Uh, we'll see it, Prabhu. Let okay. me bring that out. It's better to, I should have just one minute, Prabhu. Uh, I should have this slide. If not, then I think I can see it or no. I know that I talk about it once a while. Okay, let me share the screen. I'm gonna 